My name is Ruth Burke. I am here on YouTube because I've had a couple of my friends ask me what I'm working on. And I also watch a lot of floss tube and I thought, oh, it'd be really fun to make a video and talk all about what I am working on. And then I can have it to send to my friends and um, they can watch it whenever they feel like it and know what projects I'm currently working on. So I thought I should also talk a little bit about myself at the beginning to introduce myself. So I'm married. I have four small-ish children. My oldest is 12. My youngest is two. So a little bit of a spread. I have been primarily quilting for about 12 years. I learned to sew when I was little. I did not sew for at least 10-15 years. Then when I was pregnant with my oldest daughter, I picked it back up because I wanted aqua curtains in her nursery and I could not find them pre-made and I thought, I know how to sew. I will make curtains. And I just opened a huge rabbit hole. So after that, I picked up knitting and then more recently cross stitch. So this will be a video podcast about all of my stitchy projects. So we're going to start, we're going to kind of go in the order of what when I picked up the different projects. So we'll start with quilting, then we'll do knitting, and I'll end with what I'm currently working on in cross stitch. If you have any questions at all about anything I show or anything you see in the background, just put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. But please keep in mind, I um, have four children, so it may take me a little while to get to them, but thank you. All right, so we're going to start with quilting. I keep all of my quilting projects in this quilting journal from Fat Quarter Shop. It's really helpful. It has a page for me to list all of the projects I'm working on. I also write the day, the year I completed the project in here when it's done, so I know, you know, uh, when I've completed it. And it's also helpful to just be able to look and see, oh, wow, you know, in 2022, I finished five quilts or something like that. So if you see me referring to this book, that's what that is. So the first project, the first quilting project that I'm currently working on is Rose in Bloom. This was a block of the month from a couple of year, years. I'm trying to get the glare here. Block of the month from Fat Quarter Shop that I think started in 2021. It ended maybe a year ago. Um, I was gifted the block of the month subscription as well as the finishing kit and the backing set. I have completed the back. I can't hold it up. It's huge. It's, um, I think 95 by 95, something like that. It's quite large. The finished quilt is about 85 by 85, 84 by 84, something like that. But I can show you a few, as you can see, the fine, this is the final setting and the blocks these are oops, everything's opposite these are the blocks that you make as part of the block of the month so i can show you a few of those so they range from very simple let's get the colors there you go to you know a little more complex depending on you know what the particular project was that month so i have some green ones in here and these were completed a long time ago so as you can see they do need ironing um, you've got some taupe and I did try I know this is a background fabric but I did try to have all my hearts pointing the same direction and you know some fun pinks and greens Whoop. oh there we go sorry guys gotta get the hang of this that was a fun one I really love the pinks in this collection. I love pink in general. I don't know if you guys can see those colors. There we go. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And there are quite a few blocks here. I mean, I'm not going to show you all of them. Because I have a huge stack. These are all the blocks. So all of my 6-inch blocks are done. And I have done all of the cutting for the final layout. And I'm just showing you a few of these as I talk. When I finish that, I will figure out how to take a photo 
of what I've done. And I did try to center the text here a little bit in this block. I had a lot of fun with the text prints. Just, you know, get making sure they were all right side up. You know, occasionally you could fussy cut things. Um, you know, I didn't really fussy cut any of the florals. But I had a lot of fun with the text print. So that's project number one. The second uh, quilting project I'm going to talk about is the my mini swoon. This is a pattern that came out, it's been out for a very long time, I think 2013, by Camille Ross Kelly of Thimble Blossoms. And I've been wanting to make this for almost as long as it's been out. I love the swoon pattern. I've made a couple of different swoon blocks. I haven't made the full swoon um, quilt yet. That's something I really, I can't wait to, to make, but you know, I'm going to pick some very special fabrics for that. But in the meantime, I am making this mini spoon in Nantucket Summer by Camille Ross Kelly. This is her line that came out, let's see if I can get that to focus. It might help if my head is not in the frame there. There we go. This is the line that came out last spring. Well, really summer. Um, it's, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I have another quilt project that's also using that line. It, it, it sold out everywhere. I'm not sure any of it's still available. However, her following line called Dwell has the exact same color scheme and well, not the exact same, but very, very similar. The blues and the greens all match. Um, and so I think there's a, the addition of a few pinks in that line, but the blues and the greens are an exact match. So if you love these colors and you want to make your own, I would definitely recommend trying to get some dwell fabric because I think you'll love it. Her fabrics are gorgeous. I've been sewing with her fabrics almost as long as I've been quilting. Um, so that is my mini swoon. My next project was inspired by an American patchwork and quilting quilt that I no longer have the magazine for, but I wrote it down. So let me just quickly look this up for you. This is quilt number 26 in my book. Um, Touch the Stars is the name of the quilt. It was actually the cover quilt on that issue. Uh, it, I wrote down it's issue number 175. So if you have the magazine, you probably can picture it in your head. It was a vintage scrap quilt that they recreated with modern fabrics and it's gorgeous. And when I saw it, I thought, well, this would be so fun for like a long-term scrap project because every time I make a quilt, I have scraps and I'm always looking for things to do with my scraps. But I did not want to have to photocopy. I like using plastic templates to cut out my, my fabrics. So I knew I wanted a template. And I also did not want to have to photocopy the little paper, um, these are diamonds, sorry, the paper diamonds in the book. This is an English paper piecing EPP quilt. And so what I decided to do, actually now that I say that, I cannot remember if the one in the book is machine pieced or EPP. But what I decided to do is I was at Hobby Lobby and I don't think you can see Nope, that's not helping. Well, I found this little plastic 60 degree diamond template at Hobby Lobby. I have no idea what size it is because it did not say on the package, but I took it home, I measured it, and then I used my Explore, I'm looking at it, it's over here, to cut out 60 degree diamond paper pieces that were 3 eighths of an inch smaller on all four sides then my diamond and then I use my template to cut out my fabrics and I glue base them to my paper pieces you can see I have some fabric in here that needs basting and so I have constructed several diamonds and you'll see you'll see fabrics from quilts that I haven't showed you because they're finished or um, I'm going to talk about them in this video and I haven't gotten to them yet, but so I will show you some of the six point stars that I've made for this project. So here's one. These are fabrics from quilts 
these, this one that I'm showing you is fabric from quilt, a quilt that I've already completed. And if you want to know the fabric line for that, I'd have to look it up. These are Lori Holt fabric scraps. There's a bunch of different lines in here. Definitely flea market. I recognize that one. Um, some old Bonnie and Camille fabrics from a quilt I made. More Bonnie and Camille. You're going to see a lot of Bonnie and Camille. Like I said, I've been sewing with her fabric for a very long time. Bonnie is the mom. She's retired. Camille is the daughter. She's still designing fabrics. Some fig tree fabrics from another quilt I made. More Bonnie and Camille. You can see some of my glue basting here is um, coming undone, but that's no big deal. I'll just re-glue re it. More fig tree and Bonnie and Camille, I think. No, actually these are Balboa, Sherry and Chelsea from Oda. This was a line that came out maybe three years ago now. Some Layla Boutique in here, some Bonnie and Camille. More Balboa, Sherry and Chelsea from Oda. Love those colors. This was actually from a baby quilt I made for my youngest daughter. So that is going to be a long-term uh, work in progress. That will not be finished for years because I think I have to make a, at least over 100 of those stars. So it's going to take a while. But it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. it. I like having projects that I finish quickly and projects that take a while to finish. So I always have something, you know, interesting to work on. And that one in particular is nice and portable. I can bring it with me if I'm traveling. I think I brought those um, paper, basted paper pieces with me on my last trip. I can't remember where we went. Probably my husband's parents' house. Um, but yeah. So my next quilt project is from... The American Patchwork and Quilting. You see I have a note to myself on here, what I'm in the middle of doing. This is issue number 169. And there's a quilt in here called, it's by um, Sherry McConnell. Nine Patch Square Dance. This was a sew along from a couple years ago. And the quilt in the magazine is using Sherry's fabric. And I decided to do it in Cider by Basic Gray. I think this is Cider. So I haven't finished any blocks yet. These are my blocks in product, progress. So I've made some little nine patches. And I've made some of the sashing. And, you know, here's another one. But I haven't actually completed any of the little blocks in the quilt. Because what I wanted to do was finish all my nine patches and sashings and then put everything up on my design wall and figure out exactly what colors go with what center blocks and then when I have it all laid out and I know I'm happy with it, sew it together. Because I don't want to be stuck with, you know, the last nine patch I made doesn't work with the last, you know, center square that I have, the colors clash or maybe they're too similar. So I thought I would sew all my nine patches and then put it all up, make my color choices, and then sew everything together. So, and I'll show you what I mean here. Um, because if you don't quilt, you might not know what I'm talking about. So here's a picture of a block. And you can see the nine patch, the sashing, and then the center square right here. So here, they're kind of coordinated. These are actually two different prints, but they're you know in the same color family. I, um, I'd like to have a mix of similar colors, contrasting colors, and, you know, like I said, I really want to make sure that everything goes nicely, um, and I'm not unpicking anything. I hate pulling out my seam ripper. I think most of us do, so, yeah, so I'm going to just wait, and when I have it all together, then I will sew it. By So, moving on to another, a block of the month, actually, that... It was last year's Designer Mystery, Designer Mystery 2022 Block of the Month from Fat Court Shop. It used Nantucket Summer again, which is the same fabric I'm doing that mini spoon in that I showed you a little bit ago. I it I didn't start this last year, so this Block of the Month started last June and ended this this past May, and 
I I didn't start it last year because I was nervous that I was going to cut up the beautiful fabric into tiny pieces and then we thought we might move and I did not want to lose any of the pieces for my blocks. But as it turns out, we did not move. We're still here. This is my sewing space that I've had for 12 years and um, so I decided, you know what, I'm just starting. So here we go. This was block one. Nantucket summer again. Um, again, fabric very hard to find. But if you love these colors, the dwell line is probably your best bet. If you um, want to make that quilt, you can get all the patterns for last year's Designer Mystery on the Fat Quarter Shop website. This is not a promotion. I'm just letting you know if you love those blocks, you like the look, that's where you're going to find them. And um, the fabric, like I said, Dwell is your best bet um, since that line is pretty much sold out everywhere. When I started that project, I also decided to start the Designer Mystery for 2023. And I have also completed the first two blocks of that. So this is the 2023 Designer Mystery from Fat Quarter Shop, also using fabric by Camille Ross Kelly from Oda. And I am totally blanking on the name of this line. But it is absolutely gorgeous. I might have it written in my book, actually. It would be helpful if I left my book on my little table that I have set up here because then I wouldn't have to bend down in the middle of my recording. Let's see. This is Designer Mystery 2022, 2023. Um, I did not write anything about it. It is Camille Ross Kelly's line that just released this past June. It's gorgeous. Navies, kind of a seafoam green, oranges, a little bit of orange, some mauvey pinks. I love it. Every time I work with the fabrics, I am just reminded of how much I love them. It's really, really fun. And the blocks so far have been very simple. Um, so not, they don't take that much time to put together, which is really nice. The last quilt project that I'm going to talk about is actually a sew along that's started and ended a couple of months ago. The Vintage Kite Quilt Along using the Vintage Kite Foundation Paper from Fat Quarter Shop. This is a free sew along. If you have the paper, you can do it. There's no, this print off is from Fat Quarter Shop's blog. It's like I said, completely free. I have always enjoyed Lori Holt's fabrics. I love the colors and I thought I had a bunch of her fabric in my stash. A couple of layer cakes, half layer cakes, some charm packs, and this is perfect for that because you need pieces of fabric about five inches and larger if you can just cut it down into the rectangles you need for the paper. So I will show you some of the blocks that I've made so far using I think I'm using four different fabric lines from Lori Holt for this. So Flea Market, Calico, um, I can't remember. Maybe there's some V plaids in here. And this background is the Lori Holt cross stitch in gray, which I actually have quite a bit of in my stash. I bought, I bought seven yards of it for this project and I was going through my stash and I have a whole bunch more of it. So I might have enough because I think you need about seven or eight yards and I want to have a little extra. So those are my quilting projects and now we'll move on to knitting. So as I said in my brief introduction, Knitting is a craft that I picked up after, after quilting. I learned to knit when I was little. My mom taught me. Thank you, mom. And I basically didn't knit at all um, from when, when I was about 10 until 
I was working um, in, in graduate school um, and I was finishing up my dissertation and I needed something creative to do that didn't require as much of kind of a setting up process as quilting sometimes can require. So I started knitting and I knit, I have knit a lot of baby sweaters, mainly baby sweaters, first for other people's babies and then for my own babies. I knit them sweaters as well. Um, but lately I have really got into knitting stuffies and little 3D um, objects. So the first knitting project that I'm gonna talk about is Christopher Bunny by Susan Anderson. And sorry, this is black and white and it's super beat up. Um, <laughs> but when I saw this kit and pattern come out, she, I get her newsletter. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to make that. That is adorable. So I have finished my bunny. Here he is. I bought the kit from Susan. She has her own Barrett Wolco, I think is her .com, is her URL. And this is the, I'm new to color work, so this could be a little bit better, but here's my attempt at his sweater and his little pants. And look, there's like a little hole in the pants for his tail. So cute. This was a lot of fun. All my kids have tried to adopt him at various points. Um, we'll see who winds up with Christopher Bunny. This has been fun. And he has a little jacket, which I have not finished. So this is where I am in kind of my progress on this knitting project. I have the jacket basically completed except for the sleeves and there's going to be a little pocket here with a tiny adorable mini white bunny in it. So I can't wait to finish that up because it's going to be so cute and it's going to be so much fun to put the little jacket on big Christopher Bunny with his little stuffy in his pocket. So if that's something you might find enjoyable to definitely check out Susan Anderson's website because she has a lot of adorable stuffies there. Uh, the next knitting project is another Susan Anderson pattern. This is, I printed it in color this time. This is Snowman. And I think the kit comes with enough yarn to make two. So here, this is where I am in my Snowman pattern. And I got a little stuck at this point because she says that you can fill the snowman with either fiber fill or, you know, those pellets. Um, and I like the weight of the pellets, but I have small kids and I was really concerned about the little poly pellets coming through my knitting and potentially being a choking hazard. So what I did is I created a little like a bean bag. I sewed this out of some of my scrap um, white fabric and I filled it with poly pellets and then I stuffed it in here and put it at the bottom of my snowman and I figure I'll then put the poly fill around this and it will kind of weight it and give it a little bit you know I thought if it was just fiber fill it might fall off you know, my little shelf or wherever I have them displayed. So I wanted some weight to my snowman, but you know, again, I just didn't want to throw poly pellets in there and have them showing up all over my house. Cause you know, kids, they're gonna, you know, poke at my knitting. And if they find those little pellets, they're going to squeeze through the look, mommy, look what I anyway. Yeah. I'm not about that life. I don't need poly pellets all over my house. So here we go. Problem solved. No poly pellets in my house. So that's my snowman. I am also looking forward to having that done. And I think the little hat and little scarf, I probably held up this pattern a little too fast. Here you go. You can see the little scarf, the little hat, the little, there's even a little orange nose. I can't wait. That's going to be fun. And then I wasn't going to show you my last knitting project because it's kind of embarrassing how long I've been working on it, but I have been knitting my husband a scarf for, I've been working on this scarf for, I don't know, it might even be like 10 years. Um, so I don't know what yarn this is. It is amazingly soft. It, this is a really basic, you know, rib 
scarf. It's going to be two color. Oh, yeah, two colors, but what I'm doing is starting with this dark gray, medium gray in the middle, and then ending with the dark gray. So, you know, I think I bought two balls of this medium gray and one ball of the dark gray or something like that. So here's, this is as far as I've gotten. I think maybe, maybe the reason I've been working on it for so long is that it's, it's too simple. Like it doesn't hold my attention for very long. I mean, it is nice to have simple things, you know, you can kind of mindlessly do them while you're watching TV, but for one reason or another, this project has taken me absolutely forever. So that's all the knitting projects that I have in my bag currently. Um, of course, any questions, guys, just throw them in the comments. If, you, if I remember to do it, I'll put the link for Susan Anderson's website in the description box below. Um, that way, if you're interested, you can go check her out. So it's really cool, like local Wisconsin yarn. Um, she's also a couple of books on like kids patterns. You should definitely check her out. All right, so now I will talk about my cross stitch. Cross stitch is the newest hobby that I have picked up. I've been cross stitching for about a year, or actually I think it's been two years. I was looking for something portable that I could do on the couch while I was relaxing, chatting with my husband, watching TV, and I'd seen some really beautiful cross stitch projects um, that Kimberly of Fat Quarter Shop had done, and they looked like they were doable for a complete newbie. I hadn't cross stitched since I was, again, like 8 or 10, something like that. So I thought, let me try that. I had remembered the Ada I worked with when I was little was really crunchy and stiff, so I wasn't interested in sewing on Ada. So I bought some 25 count Lugana, and I started with a pattern by Camille Ross Kelly of Thimble Blossoms, and I do not remember the title of this pattern, but this was the first cross stitch that I started, and it's using Cosmo Floss. I had some technical difficulties over here when I started my last cross stitch video, so we're trying again. So this is my first cross stitch project, and I got bit by the cross stitch bug. I absolutely loved it. So after I started that one, I moved on to a free pattern called, oh my gosh, guys, I'll link to it in the description. This was a free pattern by Fat Quarter Shop, and they even had an Aura Floss kit. This is on 25 count. You know what? I have it written down. So um, you all saw my quilting journal at the beginning. I also have the cross stitch journal, and hopefully I wrote that down. I did not. Well, this is 25 count Lugana, probably in either oatmeal or parchment. I think parchment, actually. I'm almost 100% certain. And I used all the called for Aura Floss. I bought the Aura Floss thread kit and I loved it. I discovered I really love stitching projects that have small chunks of color like this with lots of thread changes. This was so fun. So I kept going and I started another free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop using Aura Floss. And this time I tried out 14 Count Ada by, this is Pale Gray Gingham, 14 Count Ada by Fabric Flare using all the called for Aura Floss. This was a charity um, cross stitch pattern. So, um, Fat Core Shop just asks you to make a free, like a small donation to the charity that they're supporting that year, which, make a wish. This was a make a wish foundation project. So I cannot remember what this one was called, but it matched a quilt. They did a matching quilt that year, which I have the kit for. I just haven't started. So when I start it, you'll see my blocks, but here's my finished cross stitch. I don't know how I'm going to fully finish these, if I'm going to use a frame or if I'm going to mount this on something. It was really fun. I loved so um, stitching it, so I kept going. So I have some more. Those are all my finishes. I have three finishes so far. None of them are fully finished. 
Um, but I have at least, I'm not going to say, it's not a lot of work in progresses, you know, whips is what they're called. I don't have a ton of whips, um, but the number of whips I have increases pretty much every month. And since this is my birthday month, I am probably going to start some extra whips this month to celebrate my birthday. So the first whip I'm going to talk about is, this is another older pattern. This is Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt. And when I saw this, I knew right away I wanted to make this. I love it. So I am using all the called for threads except one. So I made my very first color change on this project. I wrote it down too. I hope I wrote it down. Yes. I am sewing with all the called for threads except for my yellow. And I have the, the called for yellow here and my yellow to show you. So this is on the floss keep that Fat Quarter Shop designed to go with the pattern. And these are all the threads, the called for, it's DMCs all the called for DMC. And this is the yellow that I picked. Um, I just wanted to, this is the original yellow. I don't know if you can tell. There's a slight, slight shade difference here. This is a little bit darker. And I just wanted something a little brighter because I wanted it to match my quilts and my house. And I tend to quilt with brighter colors as you saw in the quilting segment of this video. So I switched out my yellow for something a little bit brighter and I switched out my fabric from, I think they recommended barley to parchment. So this is where I'm at. This is as far as I've gotten. It has been a ton of fun. This is the project I reach for when it's late at night I'm tired, I don't feel like using readers or any kind of magnification on my fabric and I just want to relax and sew something colorful. So this has been my go-to lately. Um, my next work in progress is Primrose Cottage Stitches ABC. So my husband is actually I think now the fourth generation of beekeepers in his family. And I really thought it would be so fun to make a few cross stitches with bees in them to celebrate, you know, his family's heritage in the beekeeping and also, you know, to, I think bees are adorable. I love, I love the honeybees um, and their honey. Um, so I thought I would, so this is the first bee pattern that I've started and I am doing it. I had the 14 count pale gray gingham from Fabric Flare for that first project I showed you. So I just used a piece of it for this. Oops, sorry guys. This is as far as I've gotten. It is almost complete. I don't know if the colors are coming through very well, but there you go. This has been really fun. I have really enjoyed stitching this. The Fabric Flare 14 count is not the Ada that I had in my head from when I was little. It's much softer. It softens as you use it. I love the, the pale gray. Um, Ada isn't my fabric of choice. I think I prefer an even weave or a linen. So I, ha I bought another Primrose Cottage Stitches pattern that coordinates with this one and I think I'm going to stitch that one on pale gray 28 count. Um, but I really have enjoyed this. I'm almost done with it. It's a lot of fun. I'm using all the called for DMCs. Sorry my floss little bit of a mess here and it's been great. My next project is my first foray into something that's a little bit of a higher count. So if you've noticed all my beginning projects, 14 count, 25 count, I don't think I have anything higher than than 14. Um, and the 14 count was Ada. So all my even weaves were 25 count. Well, as I mentioned, I love the look of linen. And I saw this pattern I, on somebody's floss tube and I thought, I want to stitch that. I'm a Christian and I just thought it would be so wonderful to stitch scripture and meditate on it while I'm stitching. So I decided to start with This Is The Day 
by Plum Street Samplers. And I am stitching it on 36 count cream and sugar by Fiber on a Win. And I will show you, let me grab a design board here just to put behind my fabric so you can see the stitching a little bit better. And like I said, I didn't iron anything guys. So this is where I'm at so far. And I am using all of the called for over dyes. And I think there's a few DMC in here as well. So there's classic color works, weeks dye works, and some DMC. The one thing I'm a little bit nervous about, my the fabric choice, again, I picked a lighter fabric than was called for because I thought it would match my home a little bit better. But I'm a little bit nervous about this ecru kind of being completely unnoticeable on this fabric. So when I get to this part of my stitching, I might make a substitution. Same for the Weak Style Works grits. If you can't see it, I might have to go like lighter or darker. We'll figure it out. So I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but for now I'm using the darker colors in this portion of the design, so it hasn't been a problem. Everything's showing up beautifully, and I love the way the, what color is that? The, is it cherry cobbler that I used in the letters? Really, it, it's gorgeous on this fabric, and I love this linen. The, um, the big adjustment was I cannot see the holes with my naked eyes. It's just a little too small. So I've been using readers to see my fabric, and so far that's working out great. I haven't had any problems. It takes a little bit more concentration, so when I'm tired, I typically won't reach for this. Um, but I already know that I am going to get either a lap magnifier or a floor stand magnifier because I love linens and I'd love to get two more 40 count, 42 count, you know, some higher count projects. Um, I don't know where my sweet spot will be. I don't know if I'm going to love 36 and just stay there or do 40, but I really enjoy stitching on linen and so that's not going to be my last project with slightly higher count threads. I My next project is Tea Time. This is a pattern by Fat Quarter Shop. Is it recording? Yeah, sorry guys, my screen went black. This is a pattern by Fat Quarter Shop that came out in one of their Stitch Quarterly bags. And... I'm using, it It was a kit, it came with fabric, thread, everything. So I am using, I believe it's 28 count, even weave. And this is my progress so far. This has been really fun. I absolutely love it. And I'm using all the, like I said, all the called for, it's DMC. And it's been really fun. I put them on these floss drops. I didn't put them on a ring, I just threw them in the bag. So that's been a great project. I haven't been stitching as much on that one lately, to be honest. I've been stitching more on some of these other ones. It came with this adorable needle minder, which I love. Because it matches, I love tea. So of course I love this needle minder. Plus my mom's favorite color is blue and I've discovered I have a soft spot for blue too. It's not my favorite color, but I still like it. So now we're getting into some of my more recent starts. Um, as I mentioned, it's my birthday month, and I thought for the month of my birthday, I would pick a few patterns to start. Well, so far I've only started one, but I ordered a few more new patterns that I will be starting probably in August because I'm going down to Alexandria in August with my husband, and I'm going to be visiting In Stitches, I think is the name of the shop down there. And I'm super excited because it's the first kind of big cross-stitch shop that I will have the opportunity to go to. So I can't wait. Um, but in the meantime, I started this small heart and hand pattern called Doodles Winter. And... I am using all of the called for floss, which are all classic color works and weeks dye works. And I started it on 32 count linen from Hobby Lobby. It's Weigert linen, but it was um, produced under the Hobby Lobby label. 
and it's in the color natural. So this is a question. Any of you that cross stitch, Hobby Lobby used to sell like really big, not huge, but larger cuts of linen from Zweigart in several different shades. And when I went to my local Hobby Lobby recently to look for some more linen, they were all gone. They basically just have Ada now, um, and it's mainly 14 count. I think they had a few 16 count, but no linen, and I was so disappointed. So I don't know if this linen is still available, guys, but I'm sure Zweigart has. Let me just put this design board on here so you can see. I'm sure Zweigart has something similar. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I've been using this um, craft tape I got in one of my sew sampler boxes on the edge of my fabric. And that's just because... Um, you can see my sewing machine over here. I do most of my stitching on that Juki. It's a straight stitch only machine. I absolutely love it. But my machine that does the zigzag stitch is kind of out of commission. And normally I would zigzag the edges of my fabric. But since my machine isn't really working well, that's really not a great option for me. So I've been using this tape and the only thing I don't like about it is it does leave a little bit of residue when I take it off my cloth. So. You know, I've been leaving nice big margins between the edge of the fabric and my design anyway. Um, but it is going to... So I did zigzag the even weave I'm using for this project, the teacup project, tea time pattern. Um, but that's when I discovered my machine isn't working that well. And so probably what I'm going to need to do is take out my serger and just start serging all my fabrics but I've been too lazy. So for now, I'm using the tape. It, I mean, it's pretty low residue tape. It's designed for crafting, but you know, it is a little bit. Oh, forgot. Forgot to show you guys the floss. So here's the call, here are the called for flosses for that, for that pattern. You can see the colors. They're so pretty. I love these blues and these pinks. Oh my gosh. And here they are, the fabric behind them. Oops. Guys, my next video, I'm going to have this down pat. There you go. So, last whip for now, pop of spring zipper. This is Bent Creek. And it actually is a kit. When you buy it, it comes with the fabric and the pearl cotton floss. This is a really large count fabric. This is like 20, 20 count linen. So I'm stitching one strand, it, this is only one strand thread, it's pearl cotton. I'm stitching one over two on this, and this is as far as I've gotten. And it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. This is another project I can take out when I'm feeling tired, because clearly I can see those holes just fine. So that's been so much fun. Anyway, if you're here and you're still watching, this is the end of the video. That's all the projects I currently have that I'm working on. Thank you for sticking around and making it to the end. And it, like I said, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. The links that I mentioned, I'll try to remember and put in the description. If I forget, just put it the question in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much, guys. See you the next one.